Hi everyone, Dr. K, naturopathic sports medicine doctor, today talking to you about food sensitivity, so tying it to my food sensitivity video that you may have seen already, and the testing and what that looks like. So as you can see, I'm in my office, very exciting. Um, and this is my first week back actually, so also very exciting. Uh, but that's a tangent, anywho. Um, so the food sensitivity is not an IgE response from the immune system. So when we talk about allergies, like straight up allergies, we're talking about things like, you know, environmental allergies. So people that have seasonal allergies and they get the itchy eye, the runny nose, kind of a scratchy throat feeling. Those are IgE reactions. Or if you get a bee sting and you're allergic to bees and you know either the area really swells up or you get that anaphylactic reaction so your your throat close up you can't breathe um, same thing with you know severe peanut allergies same thing right that's an IgE response so we do have to separate IgE versus IgG because they are quite different and the more I look into IgG, the more I realize we don't know about the immune system. But for now, um, the the blood test that I talked about is the best way that we have right now for, for evaluating food sensitivity and, and monitoring IgG responses. So IgG is, it can be anything really. I mean, everyone experiences it differently as far as I can see so far but it can show up as headaches, as joint pain, as skin reactions, as you know, low mood. Um, and the thing is that you can't really nail it down. This is something that can take years to develop and your body just hits that point where it's, it's like, yeah, no, I can't do this anymore. So for example, if you're, you know, this is your baseline and then up here is just like the point of no return, you know, you spend years eating whatever you want and whatever you want until finally you just get to a point where you've surpassed your body's tolerance and and sometimes that's just enough to to get you to be like you know what yeah I can't eat this food anymore so um, it's uh, it's definitely a different way of looking at things and it's it is obscure it's outside the box and it's not what you would necessarily think about like for example some people do have digestive issues, like they'll have the acid reflux, they'll have, you know, stomach pain, indigestion, bloating and gas, constipation, diarrhea, where you're like, yeah, you know, this makes sense. It could be something that you're eating and then you look into that and it makes sense. And as I say, other times it's very obscure, like headache and joint pain and um, low mood or or skin issues like eczema and psoriasis are heavily linked with the diet. So as much as um, IgG has a bad name and people try to discredit the test and, and what it is, um, and when I say discredit the test, I mean that it's compared to IgE often, which is very confusing and, and it's not the case. So they're quite separate. Um, and also the fact that, you know, if people say, oh, well, if you had something yellow or red show up on your test, it's because you eat those things and it's normal. Well, no, not exactly, because if, if that's how the test worked, well then everything that you've eaten will show up on the test, which is not how it works. And also there are times where the person has never eaten whatever the item is and it happens to be either yellow or red and the colors green, yellow, red, will make more sense if you watch my other video on the food sensitivity testing. But yellow meaning have in moderation, red meaning try to avoid. So for example, I had somebody that, you know, ox showed up on their, ox meat showed up on their test as red and they're like, well, I don't know, I've never eaten that so I'm not sad if I don't have to eat it anymore, right? Um, another person was snail, I think snail and radish um, were a couple that showed up for them and as I say it's not it's not an indicator of things that you've eaten it's just a marker of what is the inflammatory reaction between this food item so this antigen and your IgG or your antibodies against whatever it is.
So the bigger the response, the more it's going to be up on that scale. And uh, as I say, it's very tough to nail down. So even if it's something like what people describe as a malaise, which is, you know, you just feel tired and kind of achy and just not good and your energy's low and, but there's nothing, you can't get a lab test to say that something is wrong. That gray area is honestly perfect for, for the food sensitivity, sensitivity testing and, and try to figure out, okay, what's going on with the immune system? Cause as I say, it's not as cut and dry as what we think. And, uh, it's just, um, it's a great way to just differentiate and start feeling better, essentially. So um, IgG, IgE, very different, very different responses in the body. But ultimately, um, the food sensitivity testing is, is the best bet for now that we have in, in getting any answers about this. So if you want to learn more or you want to talk about this or you want to ask questions, then feel free to drop by my website drknaturopath.com and uh, send me an email and, and we can chat. All right. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.